Passive Income for Beginners and Dummies. Written by Giovanni Richters. Narrated by Ron Garner. Introduction. You have a deep desire to become financially independent and live the life you deserve, which sparked your interest in generating passive income. Maybe you've read about it countless times online. Maybe you've heard of countless people having a lot of success and freedom. Maybe you even know of a few people who are already thriving in generating passive income. You know you want the same level of success that other people have had. The problem is, you just don't know how to get started and get it done. Perhaps you've dreamt of having a supplemental source of income to take care of your family. Maybe you want to have more money for retirement or live the life you deserve. Maybe you just want to have the means to go on vacation and have more free time. Or maybe you just want to get a good start in the world of business before you quit your job. Whatever your reason, I promise you generating passive income is a worthy and attainable goal. You just need to be shown how you can go about obtaining it. And this is why this book is perfect for you. I will show you four powerful ways that have proven themselves to generate passive income time and time again. You will discover how you can implement each one of them step by step. You are never left wondering what to do next. I have tried to keep this book as concise as possible by getting to the point. You won't waste your time reading background material. You won't spend countless hours trying to get to the bottom of everything covered. I have kept in mind that these days, life is fast-paced, and people simply don't have the time to be bored with long lectures. So, you can be sure to devour the contents of this book in one sitting and immediately get up and do something about what you learned. Chapter 1. Passive Income Explained Most people view passive income as earning money while you sleep. But this doesn't mean that you won't be putting in the work first. Instead, it's just that your payment won't be made to your bank account the traditional way. The effort, time, and money you put in will be paid indirectly. The best thing with passive income is that if you create a valued service or product, you'll get to earn income from it for an extended amount of time. Why does passive income matter? In the current economy, only a select few earn enormous salaries. The average employee takes home only enough to sustain his or her needs until the next payday. Sometimes, efforts to earn more are hindered by our education, experience, and the number of hours we can devote to work. Passive income matters because it allows you to fill this gap. It matters even more because it can easily supplement your active income and eventually replace it. You have complete control, more freedom to do what you like, and the autonomy to spend time with those who matter to you. The passive income methods discussed later on are long-term profit generators. Common Misconceptions About Passive Income most people who get into passive income do so without clear information of how it works. A few others rely on unfiltered information on YouTube from so-called gurus and other money-hungry websites. Well, most information from these mediums are false as they make you believe that the work is easy and tell you that you'll earn easy money as you sleep. To save you from predators, this section will explore various misconceptions or stereotypes about passive income. It's easy. This is by far the leading misconception about passive income. It's misleading by the name itself, as well as the plethora of misinformation out there. The majority of people who are introduced to passive income tend to think that all they need is a few hours of work, a small amount of money, and then they'll be set to generate a lot of money for the rest of their lives without any extra effort. Well, passive income simply means that the traditional 9-to-5 routine has been scrapped from your life. But it also suggests that you'll be getting introduced into a multitasking lifestyle that involves problem solving to searching for new trends in your market that will maximize your profits and keep money flowing. So, you'll be working all the time as the work will never be completely done because you have many opportunities to grow your passive income. The reason many people fail is because they are not ready to dedicate extra time and energy in the entire process. 
you need to learn from their mistakes if you want to stand a better chance of success. Little or no work required. You might be willing to take the risk, apply the monetary investment, but if you aren't ready to dedicate your time into the entire process, you're surely destined to fail. Ignore everything you've heard or read elsewhere that insists you only need a few hours every week to focus on the business. To maintain a steady flow of this income, you can't treat this business as a hobby or just something that you can spend time on when you casually wish. In reality, there's a lot of work involved if you need to actually realize your goals. In the initial steps, it might be harder than the traditional job. The risk involved might frustrate you the moment you realize the little money you are making at the beginning stage. Your passive income starts to build up once you have put in the time, dedication, and effort into the particular venture you are working. For the majority, it is a slower process, but definitely worth it. Profitable from the start. Without a doubt, this is the main reason you and I are crazy about passive income. The misconception, however, is that you can make plenty of money within a very short time. While it's very true that passive income is very profitable, you shouldn't expect it to happen overnight. It'll take a lot of effort, time, and investment even to just make a couple of dollars consistently in the beginning. You also need to be careful of passive income opportunities where you are supposed to put down an initial investment. Just because you're anxious to start earning doesn't mean you should hand out your money left and right each time you stumble across a passive income advertisement online. Always think it through and research thoroughly before putting your both feet into it. So, it's very possible to make a lot of money with passive income, but it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. The best part, however, is if you're able to do it the right way, from the onset, it'll not only render you greater freedom than a job, but will also earn you financial success in the long run. Drawbacks of Passive Income As you might have already figured out, it's very necessary to get into passive income with a practical and realistic mindset. You shouldn't be that person who rushes into passive income, jumps on the bandwagon unprepared, only to later realize that you were misinformed and did not do your due diligence up front. Here are a few precautions. It's possible to lose money and time. Starting out, you will either have to put in your time or money, and very often, both. What this means is that you might have to outsource tasks that you would rather not do or are not able to do. You'll also lose time investing in a passive income venture that might never make any money. It's best to look at these losses as a learning experience instead of looking at it as a waste of your time and money. Knowledge and experience gained is a valuable asset in itself. It's also not uncommon to see beginners losing the initial money they invest in their passive income project. My advice is always have a couple of months of savings as a backup. For instance, if you're purchasing an investment property, investing every single dime you have in your name isn't a wise decision. You might need access to more cash before your income picks up to pay the bills or other expenses that might arise. Therefore, it is better to either have some money stashed away for emergency purposes, or better yet, start with a venture that doesn't demand a lot of cash at the beginning. Always do your research and follow your own intuition. If an opportunity seems too good to be true, do some additional research first. Investing in bad ideas. Besides the possibility of losing your money, investing in bad ideas is the other pitfall that can happen to you. No matter how much money you have to work with, time you put into your venture, or the energy you dedicate to your passive income, investing in a bad idea will take you nowhere. In this book, I'll show you long-term and consistent ways of making passive income so you won't fall for these bad ideas. No more blame game. When you're your own boss, you are responsible for all your decisions, whether good or bad. There is truly no one else to blame when something goes wrong. 
some people work better under the supervision of a manager or boss to get things done. Others are perfectly fine to work for themselves and schedule their own projects. You need to find out if you are a person who can work for themselves. Some people work best if they have a supervisor monitoring their activity and giving them tasks to work on. Chapter 2. Dominate with e-commerce. People spend billions of dollars buying products online. Selling online means access to a national and quite often international customer base. If you are able to get just a small piece of that billion dollar pie, you'll be able to live more comfortably of your passive income. Set up your own e-commerce site in order to sell products and take a piece of that pie. It's now very easy to start selling products through drop shipping, which allows you to import products into your store which are shipped directly to the customer's address when they've made a purchase. You don't even need to store the products in a warehouse or ship them yourself. You can sell tech, beauty products, art, crafts, antiques, books, clothing, or anything you think could potentially sell well, which you could scale into a profitable business. Low startup costs and little to no overhead also makes this model very cost efficient. After you have an idea of what you will sell on your e-commerce website, you need to set up your site. You do not need any technical skills at all to sell online. But it is important to provide the kind of online environment that will make people want to purchase from you rather than competitors. This is where good marketing and copywriting skills will come in handy. Shopify for the win. Shopify is an online e-commerce platform which lets you set up your online store in a matter of minutes. The website offers over 100 templates to create your own store, many of which are free of charge themes designed for stores in specific industries like jewelry, electronics, or fashion. You can customize each theme so your store looks unique. Update your fonts, colors, and add a personalized logo to create a shop that represents your online brand. The basic plan Shopify offers is plenty enough to get started on your first online store. And once you start making consistent sales, you may choose to upgrade to a different plan. If you would like to create a Shopify store, all you need is an email, a password, and a unique store name. You have to give them information about yourself, including your name, country of residence, address, phone number, and desired product type you wish to sell. Once your account is created, you'll be able to choose a theme. Filter through themes by industry, features, reputation, or price until you find the main one you want. Then go through the sample image to check out the reviews of additional store owners who've utilized this theme. Over 70 to 80% of shoppers will visit your site on their mobile phone. So make sure you check out your theme on a mobile device. Shopify also has the feature to create a blog page or website for your shop within the platform if you don't already have one. The site also allows you to connect your Google Analytics so that you can assess your marketing strategies and monitor how customers are finding your store and navigating through your site. Analyzing customer and visitor data in Google Analytics is very important if you want to grow your site and get more sales. Shopify makes it very easy to accept different payment methods online. This would be a nightmare if you had to set this up yourself. Shopify offers integrated payment processors like PayPal to help payment processing move more smoothly. When choosing a payment processor, you should focus on the transaction charges and supported card types. After you have set up your shop and your analytics, it's time to start marketing your products. You can market your products on social media through paid search, word of mouth, paid advertising, etc. There are many avenues to promote your products. Here is a crucial tip. It's best to start out selling products which cost less than $50. Reason for this is that people will gladly open their wallet for a product that is not so expensive. They don't have to do research on to find the best price. The higher the price, the more cautious customers will be before buying and they will do some comparison shopping first. Think about it like this. If you need to buy green beans, you will visit your local grocery store and buy what is available or on sale that same day. However, if you make an expensive purchase, such as a house, you might take a couple of months to do research, 
tour multiple houses, discuss your multiple listings with friends and family, and even then, you are still skeptical about your choice. Customers have the same mentality when they shop online. If it's a product or service that costs less than $50, they might just make a spur-of-the-moment purchase. However, when you sell products in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars, customers will do their due diligence before making a purchase. Another crucial tip you need to remember is that it takes most people at least six to seven touch points with your brand or site before they buy anything from you. Your e-commerce site doesn't have the visibility or popularity of Amazon. Customers do not know you or your site. This is where good marketing separates beginners from winners. About 1% to 2% of new visitors who land on your site will buy from you. 2% might seem low to you, but that is actually a very good metric of sales for new visitors. What happened to the other 98%? Well, they visited your site and left, never to return again. Or maybe not. You have the option to remarket to previous visitors. Remarketing means that you place a tag or script called a cookie on any visitor who comes to your site. This cookie is stored on your visitor's mobile phone, tablet, or desktop computer. This cookie allows you to remarket to this visitor, meaning that whenever they browse the internet and visit various sites, your ads will show up promoting the products that they visited. Remarketing is a good way to stay top of mind with your visitors. Another good way to always be present in your customer's mind is to send them frequent emails which are highly relevant to your customers. The best way to do this is to collect emails on your website from visitors who came to your e-commerce site. Once these are collected, you can send them coupons, discounts, or just helpful information. Doing this builds trust with your brand, which warms up your visitor to make a purchase. Google Ads, Instagram, and Facebook Ads are good advertising platforms that can drive high-quality visitors to your site. Having domain is crucial to your online success. You do not need a domain name to get your Shopify site live, but it will make you look more professional and it will help you position your brand. There is no excuse for a website to not have a domain name for their site. Domain names are very cheap. You have two options for this. First, you can purchase a domain name directly from Shopify, and it will be automatically added to your store. If you have no idea or clue about hosting a website, this is a better option to go with. This will usually cost you anywhere between $9 to $14 per year. Second, you can go to a third party, ergo GoDaddy, and buy a domain from there. These start at $1.99 per year with coupon codes. The difference is that you will need to redirect your DNS records to Shopify. Chapter 3. Rental Income from Investment Properties Real estate investing is one of the best ways to grow your financial portfolio. Real estate investors usually search for real estate properties priced below market value and sell or rent them for a profit. Common types of real estate investments include investing in foreclosures, commercial real estate, rehabs, real estate-owned properties, REO, rental properties, and purchasing properties wholesale. Unless you're independently wealthy, you're going to have to find a way to pay for your investment properties. It may be a good idea to partner with other investors or to secure loans to purchase a property. Most investment properties must have insurance. It is vital to get the right kind of insurance coverage. Make sure to do your research and to talk to an insurance agent or a real estate attorney to discuss the insurance coverage you may need. You also need to find out the licensing requirements in your state and apply for one. Real estate investing is a fast-paced industry. You must act quickly to take advantage of property deals. Some house flippers purchase, fix up, and sell properties in as little as a few weeks. You need to find buyers and renters for the properties who are willing to pay your asking prices. It is advisable to start with just one investment property to get a feel for the process. Once you have successfully sold or rented the property, build upon that experience to grow your investment real estate business. Your internet presence is crucial and you need a good website for your real estate investing business. 
Before you start in a real estate investment industry, you need to obtain the necessary education. You don't need a specific degree, but knowledge of real estate transactions will help keep you on the right track. There are amazing resources out there that can help you learn about real estate investing. Read books on the subject and look into classes at local colleges. Start networking with investors near you. Attending a local real estate investing meetup is a great way to learn real estate investing tips, tricks, and techniques. Rental Income The housing market is one of the most crucial markets you can invest in. Why? Because we all need somewhere to stay, or we need a premise to act as the base of our business operations. Part of this market is the rental market. When most people are unable or unwilling to purchase a property, they may choose to rent instead. While selling property results in the seller receiving a bulk payment for the property, investment properties, however, provide you with a monthly rental income, allowing you to create passive income. Renting allows you to earn enough income to cover the cost of that property that you have to fill and provide you with extra, as well as in the form of cash flow. Of course, there are certain risks involved. You could end up with a destructive tenant or non-paying tenant. However, one could say that no form of passive income is without risk, and this is no different. You will have to do the right amount of research into your potential tenants before renting out your property. While the housing market is fairly straightforward, there are a few things to consider to make sure you can get the most out of your business with reduced risk. If you have another property where you do not live or an outbuilding attached to your home that is not in use, then rental income should be the right way forward for you. Renting out your property. You need to consider your property type first when planning a rental. What type of property is it? Are your tenants going to be using it for residential purposes or business purposes? You will have to decide if the property needs to be fixed up first before renting out. If not, you may need to invest a little in repairing anything that is damaged or broken while making it look as attractive as possible to potential tenants. Remember, you want to find tenants who will be happy living in your premises and make it their own home. From there, consider your neighborhood and the features of your property. This will help you in determining the monthly rent of your investment property. However, it's important to note that some places may have control over your rental rate. New York, Maryland, and Washington all have varying degrees of rent control laws, so you need to do some extensive research on the rental market and its jurisdictions in your area. Property Manager or Do-It-Yourself Once your property is in decent shape, and you have an idea of how much you're going to rent it out for, the next step is to either manage it yourself or have someone else do it. You could choose to hire a property manager that will take care of your property. There isn't too much harm in doing it yourself, provided you know what you are doing, but you will be able to scale your passive income business a lot faster if you have a property manager who takes care of your properties and your tenants. There are benefits to both, but a good property manager offers you the benefit of having a tried and tested procedure when it comes to renting properties to tenants. They will streamline the process for you and handle all the paperwork and communication with the tenant and relaying it back to you. You generally don't have much, if anything, to do with this process. The downside being that property managers can charge a hefty fee for their services, generally 10% of the rental amount, and there might be some additional fees so make sure to discuss this before hiring one. On the other hand, you could research yourself and screen the right tenants, collect rent, find contractors, fix any property issues that arise, etc. However, some tenants will try to take advantage of individual homeowners compared to a property management company. The main way they will do this is by trying to play on your emotions with sad stories about why they weren't able to pay the rent on time. Warning Signs Let's just assume you want to rent your property out without using a property manager. You will need to learn how to vet your potential tenants. This is arguably one of the most important aspects of renting. You need to correctly screen a prospective tenant's past behavior in the form of a credit profile and their tenant profile to determine that they are trustworthy and that there are no red flags to consider. 
Past behavior is usually an indicator of future behavior, so it's best to avoid all tenants who have any hiccups on their profiles. There are a few suspicious behaviors that you will need to be aware of. For example, a tenant who asks to enter an agreement in a family member's name. Another red flag would be a potential tenant who tries to negotiate on the initial sum to be paid. If a tenant asks to pay their deposit in installments, this may indicate a lack of money and will paint a negative picture of them being able to pay their rent on time. Make sure to evaluate your pet policies. Will pets be allowed into your property? If you do allow pets, what pets are suitable for the type of accommodations you are providing? Finally, evaluate the type of tenants you would like to have. Younger tenants are more likely to cause harm to your property, as well as tenants with children. Look for tenants who seem responsible and stable in their lives. Rental Agreement Once you feel that you have a firm grasp on what to look out for, you need to draw up a leasing agreement in advance. This shows that you are well prepared once you have found a tenant that is up to your standards. It's usually possible to find a lease template online. However, it is up to you to ensure that your lease has all the necessary sections and subsections to satisfy your needs. As an example, some of the more general aspects of the lease should include tenant names. This is not just the name of the person responsible, but all tenants on the property. Length of tenancy. All rental documents should state how long the term of the lease runs for. You could either have a rental agreement, which runs from month to month and self-renews until terminated, or a fixed-term lease, which usually lasts about a year. Rental fee. This should specify the fees to be paid, when it is due, and how it is to be paid. Consider including your payment methods as well as any fees related to late checks or check bounces. Deposits and additional fees. Be clear on what you may use for damages, overdue bills, cleaning fees, as well as what the tenant is not allowed to use the deposit for, final month's rent. It is also beneficial to include where the deposit is being held and whether it will accrue any interest. Damage and maintenance. Make sure the responsibilities of both the tenant and yourself are well documented in this section so that both yourself and the tenant know where they stand in this regard. Pets. All restrictions and conditions on pets must also be documented. Once you are well set and organized, you can begin to advertise your property. Since there is a large demand for housing, you will receive offers for your property once it is out there. Placing advertisements on social media, property websites, and advertising on Google will bring prospective tenants straight to you. As I said in the beginning, this is one of the more straightforward methods of bringing in a passive income and can be one of the most reliable. It can provide a more stable footing for you to go out and live comfortably. Many millionaires started out with a couple of properties and scaled their businesses into more residential properties or commercial properties. Chapter 4. Selling T-Shirts Online Do you have an interest in the fashion, particularly T-Shirts? You can skip the cost associated with operating a brick-and-mortar T-Shirt store by using print-on-demand services. Selling T-Shirts online can be an exciting and lucrative venture. You'll need to set a budget that includes inventory costs, a domain name, a web and graphic designer, and monthly web hosting if you want to set up a t-shirt store. The best way to start is to sell your t-shirt designs through print-on-demand sites, such as Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, Teesprings, Zazzle, etc. The benefits of these sites is that they have a built-in customer base that you already have access to. They also make it very easy to upload your designs onto t-shirts and they print and ship any of the t-shirts you created to the buyer. So, you only have to worry about uploading the t-shirt designs. You can also set up a website yourself. When setting up your website, however, make sure to choose a shop name that matches the type of clothes you are selling. You can use a ready-to-use e-commerce platform or hire a web designer to create your website. To get your inventory and turn a profit, 
you're going to have to buy clothing at wholesale prices and sell them to consumers. Or you can use a service like Printful to take care of printing and shipping. Having a plan for shipping your products is crucial. If your shipping costs are too high or your shipping time too slow, you're likely to lose customers. That's why I highly recommend starting with a print-on-demand service or connect your site to Printful. Once you've got your products in an online store, you'll have to advertise them. A lot of store owners use social media to promote their products. You may even want to consider posting videos online or spending a modest budget on online advertising. Starting a blog on your site can also be a great way to bring traffic to your online store. Having a blog will potentially get your store more exposure. Business Model of the T-Shirt Business The T-Shirt Business has many advantages, but also some disadvantages. The main problem is going to be your competition. There are hundreds, even thousands of T-Shirt designers on the market for every imaginable target group. But this major disadvantage is also your greatest advantage. The market is virtually insatiable. Do you know anybody who only owns one T-shirt or a sweater? No. And every year, millions of new shirts are sold, although each of us has more than enough shirts at home. A T-shirt is not only something you wear, it can express your feeling. It makes you more confident, and best of all, people display their personality through their T-shirts. That's why this business will always have new customers. More importantly, there will always be new designs for new target groups or old target groups with new interests. The market continues to grow. The second problem with this model is that sometimes it can take a very long time to create a design that just works well and connects to your target group. But the beauty of it is that once you find one, you can scale it incredibly easily by publishing your designs on multiple print-on-demand sites. The good thing about making passive income through selling t-shirts is that it only takes a couple of interesting t-shirt designs to start making hundreds of dollars. In the beginning, you probably won't make thousands a month, but you can scale it to that amount. Not only that, you can design t-shirts at your own pace and you are not limited to an office. You're probably wondering how you're supposed to get the t-shirts once you finally design them. The beauty of this business model is that you only have to create the designs. Printing and shipping are handled by t-shirt suppliers, such as Printful. Generating t-shirt ideas. A good way to come up with t-shirt ideas is to look at what is currently selling well. You can then create a variation of these bestsellers or look at specific trends that you can jump on. For example, t-shirts about cats and tacos continue to sell well. So you could create a shirt that combines tacos and cats. This will allow you to target two buyers at the same time. Some t-shirts sell only during the holidays and others sell all year round. For example, Easter, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, etc. These are shirts that only sell during specific days or months, but the sheer amount of sales you can get from these makes it worth it. Think about topics that people really care about. Retirement, animals, sports, politics, etc. If you can combine two topics into one shirt, you will potentially hit a home run as these types of designs are not only unique, they also make you stand out from the competition. As a complete newcomer, you should start by defining your target group. If you already have a design that sells well and a target group, for example, because you run a bigger fan page or produce t-shirts for your club, you should scale this winning design. It is always easier to scale than to find a new winning design. If you do not yet have a design and target group, you should define a suitable target group. You should invest a little more time in defining your target group. Do some research for a few hours until you are sure which people you want to reach. Even the best design is useless if it is presented to the wrong target group. To define a target group, you should sit down and write down the most important social demographic details. These include, among others, gender, age, family status, interest, profession. However, the most important thing 
is that your target group is enthusiastic about their topic as mentioned earlier. This includes hobbies, sports, family, jobs, events, food, and drink, but also topics such as religion, ethnicity, or seasonal events. Over time, it has been found that some target groups are better than others because they simply spend more money or have the ability to spend more. Without being prejudiced, women, for example, are more likely to buy shirts online than men. Experience shows that an older target group from the age of 30 upwards is more likely to buy than teenagers or young adults in their mid-20s. These often simply do not have the capital to buy many things on the side. However, it is important here that you test yourself. These are only guidelines and not laws. Your target group might well behave differently. Current events. It can make sense to create designs based on upcoming events. Find out what big events are going to take place in your target group soon. Or offer something special for individual events. Often, more regional events, such as First Fridays or Free Taco Mondays, are not yet covered by designs and offer an interesting shirt to your target group. When you choose a design in your niche, you should know that complex designs are not always better. Most designs that sell well are simple designs with a graphic and some text. Some best-selling shirts only have text on them. But even if a design does not have to be very complex to be successful, it is of utmost importance that the design is appealing and fits your target group. Because buying a t-shirt is almost always an impulse purchase. That means you don't think for a long time whether you need a new t-shirt or not. You see it, it makes you feel good or appeals to you, and buy on the spot as the price is low enough for you not to have to think too hard about making a purchase. Scale your t-shirt portfolio. When you first tested your design, you probably focus on the best-selling products, white designs on a black t-shirt. The first thing you should do now is extend your design to other products that are available. These include sweaters, tank tops, hoodies, and much more. If you only concentrated on one gender, for example, women, it can make sense to print this design on clothes for males. Another quick win is to offer your winning designs in different colors, but make sure that the design is still clearly visible on these colors. Although plain black t-shirts with light designs are the most sold products, it does not cost more money and hardly any time to offer your design in different colors and may attract some additional interested customers. Now that you have exhausted your niche's full potential, you think about uploading these designs to other print-on-demand platforms. Outsourcing to designers. In order to scale your t-shirt business to the next level, you need to outsource your designs to a competent designer who can create unique, eye-catching designs. One of the most important questions when scaling should be the choice of a suitable designer who is not only competent, but can deliver your designs on time. There are many different platforms where you can find designers and other freelancers who do jobs for you at an affordable price. The three best known are Fiverr, 99designs, and Upwork. When you just start out looking for a designer, you should not spend too much money on your first designs. However, spending too little on your designs is also not what you want to do. The problem with these cheap offers is that the freelancer on Fiverr often spend all day creating designs for t-shirts. Therefore, it often happens that many designs often look very similar. This is, of course, the opposite of what we want. Good designs inspire and stand out from the crowd. Fiverr is a platform where freelancers from all over the world offer their services. The great thing about Fiverr is that you can find designers who can create designs for you as little as $5. On Upwork, on the other hand, the designs are often a bit more expensive, but you get the level of individuality that you lack on Fiverr. I recommend Upwork to anyone who wants to find a good designer and work with them for a longer period. 99designs is the site to go to for very professional and unique designs. It goes without saying that these designs will also be the most expensive. 
So if you want to build a long-term business and maybe even have great freelancer as your employee in the future, you've come to the right place. If you want to get into the t-shirt business slowly and have a small amount of capital to start with, you should start with Fiverr instead. So how do you find a good designer? This is not art. On all three websites, you can search for the designers who create t-shirt designs. Look at the ratings previous customers left and also look at their portfolio. Do you like the designer's style? How fast can he or she deliver their work? Marketing your business. Social media can be a great avenue to promote your t-shirts. Reason for this is that social media advertising allows you specifically advertise to your target group. However, I have always found that organic traffic that you can get from print-on-demand sites, such as Merch by Amazon and Redbubble, is harder to get. But you also don't have to pay for advertising. The last part of this chapter will only deal with the social media platforms I recommend to put your t-shirt designs in front of your visitors. Instagram. The first social media platform you should definitely have a presence on is Instagram. This is an image and video-based platform for social exchange. And that's why Instagram is so convenient. The production of suitable content is relatively uncomplicated. Nevertheless, it is important to upload high-quality images and video content. Instagram is also part of Facebook. This allows us to link our Instagram profile to Facebook and coordinate posts and advertising through Facebook. Building a successful Instagram account does require some creativity and work, but you don't have to post any photos of yourself. All you have to do is upload high-quality pictures of your shirts or models who have your shirts on. It is not necessary to show your face on the platform. Pinterest. So, Pinterest is a great way to stand out from the competition. Pinterest is a platform that is completely underestimated by most t-shirt designers. Here, you can upload product images in a very targeted manner and adjust them to your target group with slight keyword optimization. Pinterest has a similar demographic of users, which is more skewed towards women. However, Pinterest visitors also looking for completely different things here. Very popular topics on Pinterest are to-do lists, recipes, travel, health and wellness, beauty and motivational. So, if you can upload t-shirt designs in with these topics in mind, your pin might go viral. Twitter. This social media platform hasn't been doing too well with keeping up with its competitors. However, Twitter is still a viable social platform to reach the masses. Over 300 million users are active on the platform, and most are in their 30s and up. Posting your t-shirt designs on Twitter is a no-brainer, as people in their 30s have expendable income. Twitter might not get you a ton of followers or sales, but you should definitely use it to promote your brand. The key is to have a presence on all the social platforms mentioned. An easy way to keep up with posting to these channels is to syndicate your post. Managing multiple accounts under one platform, such as Hootsuite, will make it much easier to plan, schedule, and publish your post. Chapter 5. Dividend Income The last passive income source we will discuss is one where you get started receiving passive income the fastest, but your income will also start out at the low end. You'll have to stick with it and grow it up to a point where you can live off of it. You receive dividend income from blue chip companies' shares you bought that pay out a dividend, which is a portion of the company's net profit. The amount you receive depends on how many investors own shares in a dividend-paying company. For example, let's say you bought 10 shares of stock in Coca-Cola. The company's shares are trading at $45.21 so you paid $452.10 for 10 shares. Every quarter, Coke pays a $0.41 cents dividend. For the year, this ends up being $1.64 it pays out in dividends per share. Since you own 10 shares, you end up getting paid $16.40. Now, $16.40 
does not seem like a lot of return on your investment of $452.10. But Coke increases their dividend payment frequently, and you can reinvest those dividends to buy more shares in Coke or any other company. When reinvesting, you can also purchase fractional shares. The way you grow your dividend income is through purchasing more dividend-paying stocks, reinvesting those dividends to buy more shares, and the company's constantly increasing the dividend payment. Dividends can be paid in cash or shares. It is a cash dividend if cash checks are used to distribute profit, meaning that the dividend will be deposited into your investment account. And it is a dividend in shares if it is distributed in the form of shares. Most companies that pay out a dividend are in the maturity phase. Not all companies pay out frequent dividends. I only like to invest in companies which pay out dividends that increase faster than inflation and have been consistently growing for at least the last 10 years. So it's important to remember to analyze these companies' financial metrics, also called fundamental analysis, in order to determine which ones you want to have on your watch list. So you don't go out and just buy companies that pay out a high dividend amount. You need to analyze the health of a company first, and then you can look at their dividend payment history. Historically, tech companies have not been a good source of dividend income. This has everything to do with the phase tech companies are in. Most tech companies are in the growth phase, which means they invest as much of their profits back into the business in order to grow as fast as possible. The problem with tech companies is that they always need to be on the cutting edge and keep their competitors at bay. That's why they always have to invest in research and development. However, there are some exceptions. The tech giant, Microsoft, does pay a healthy dividend, but companies such as Google and Facebook don't. Most investors never focus on dividends, which is a shame. They focus on capital gains, which means they want to see the value of their investments increase. For example, those 10 shares in Coke that you bought earlier for $452.10, you will want to see it increase by 7-10% to in a year. However, in times of economic turmoil or when the stock is trading downwards, you could end up losing money if the value of your Coke investment decreases and you end up selling your shares. Unlike investing for capital gains, dividend-paying stocks are stocks that allow you to generate a steady stream of income, which increase every year, if you do your due diligence in buying the right ones. The purpose here is to quickly build income while setting you up for long-term wealth. Investing in Dividend Stocks When it comes to buying companies' shares, you're going to need to do some extensive analysis. A good place to start is to learn fundamental analysis. This is where you analyze a company based on how profitable it is, how consistently they can generate sales, if they have products or services that are unique, how much debt the company is sitting on, and how fast it could pay it off, etc. You can get most of this data from a company's 10Q or 10K reports. After doing your initial analysis, you will still need to have a strategy on how to choose to invest. Dividend investors are long-term investors who only sell in specific situations. I only sell a dividend-paying stock if it either cuts or eliminates their dividends. Having an allocation or diversification strategy should also be very high on your priority list. A good rule of thumb is that the younger you are, the more risk you can take which could potentially result in a higher reward. This means you can allocate more of your investments into stocks compared to bonds, which are historically a safer investment. What to look for in stocks? Simply buying stocks for the dividends that they pay is a crucial error that many investors make when starting. Another issue is listening to gurus who tell you what to buy and sell. It's always best to do your own due diligence and learn from your mistakes when you think about buying individual dividend-paying stocks. When looking at dividend-paying companies, these are some of the financial metrics you want to look at when it comes to the dividends. 
payout ratios. Look for important numbers, such as the payout ratio, which is the percentage that is being paid out as a dividend to shareholders out of the company's earnings. There is no ideal payout ratio. This ratio is just one indicator to look at, which gives you some insight on how safe the dividend is. If you notice that the company has seen an increase in their payout ratio year over year and it's getting closer to 100%, it means that the company is almost paying out all of its earnings to shareholders as a dividend. This can be problematic, but it's best to look at the industry average payout ratio. Some sectors always have a higher payout ratios, like utility companies. On the opposite end, a company with a lower payout ratio might look appealing because the company has a lot of leeway to increase their dividend payments. But it also means that you will get a lower dividend check out of the earnings a company makes. The best solution is to have a company that keeps their payout ratio steady. For example, Genuine Parts Company, primarily known for selling car and industrial parts, works hard to keep their payout ratio below 70%. Dividend Yield The next aspect you will need to consider is the dividend yield. This is the return you will receive from your investment in the form of dividend payments. However, there are key indicators you will need to watch out for. For example, if the dividend yield goes up, it could be a result of falling stock. Fairly normal dividend yield should be considered between 2% and 5%. Consistency. This is one of the most important aspects when looking at dividend stocks. Think of it as the credit record of a stock. You'll want to look for companies that have been consistent in raising their dividend payments yearly at a minimum of 4%, higher than the average inflation rate. Consistency is what you need to look for across the board. So a company who can consistently raise their dividends, their sales, and their earnings, a company who has been consistent in keeping their payout ratio steady. Look for companies to have high returns on equity with little to no debt. These are signals that the business is in a great spot and could provide a good cushion should anything problematic occur. A company drowning in debt always gets in trouble when there is an economic downturn. I do not predict the future earnings or sales of a company. I look at the company's past earnings, sales, debt, and management. This gives me the confidence that the company will keep performing at a good rate going into the future. I also like it when companies sell products or services that are cash cows for them. Think of a product like a Pepsi drink. Pepsi has been selling the same soda for as long as I can remember, only coming out with slight variances to their product. This is a great cash cow for this company because they've been selling the same product year after year, not having to make any changes to the product. Also, when you invest in dividend-paying stocks, make sure you invest in companies that make sense to you when it comes to their business practices. I always stay away from companies which has a business model I do not understand. For example, the company Apple designs, manufactures, and markets the products, which are smartphones, personal computers, tablets, smartwatches, and more. We can then break it even further into specific products they sell, where they sell them, and how they market their products. Another example, Procter & Gamble owns valuable branded products of a very high quality, which it sells through retailers such as Amazon, Walmart, Target, etc. Some of their products are Tide, Mr. Clean, Dawn, Crest, Pepto-Bismol, Pampers, and more. Both these companies sell products I'm familiar with or have heard about. I'm also aware of their business model. Conclusion It is always a good idea to remember that passive income is not a source of income that requires little to no work. The unfortunate truth is that it will require a lot of work and dedication in the beginning. But if you begin to think of the long-term rewards of your initial hard work, you will put the time and effort in to reach your goals. That is why having a realistic goal is very important. It will drive you forward 
when you feel like it is no longer worth it. Throughout this book, there have been detailed explanations of several different options you can start with for consistent passive income. Some of them have limitless potential in terms of how much passive income you can make, such as dividend investing and real estate investment properties. However, you will be perfectly capable of receiving the equivalent of a second salary for the work you have done, provided that you put into work with the options given. It is important to remember that potential for earnings is just that, potential. It does not mean you will earn that amount, and it certainly doesn't mean that anyone is entitled to that amount because they chose the field with the highest potential. Remember, success will not be instant. It will feel like an uphill battle. But once you reach that mountaintop and look down, you will see that it was well worth the journey. It's up to you to take the next step and start working on creating passive income. The four methods we talked about are passive income methods that will provide you consistent income. There are many opportunities that come and go, but these are stable and will be here for you to take advantage of. Disclaimer. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved. The content contained within this book may not be reproduced, duplicated, or transmitted without direct written permission from the author or the publisher. Under no circumstances will any blame or legal responsibility be held against the publisher or author for any damages, reparations, or monetary loss due to the information contained within this book, either directly or indirectly. Legal Notice this book is copyright protected. It is only for personal use. You cannot amend, distribute, sell, use, quote, or paraphrase any part or the content within the book without the consent of the author or publisher. Disclaimer notice. Please note, the information contained within this document is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All effort has been executed to present accurate, up-to-date, reliable, complete information. No warranties of any kind are declared or implied. Readers acknowledge that the author is not engaged in the rendering of legal, financial, medical, or professional advice. The content within this book has been derived from various sources. Please consult a licensed professional before attempting any techniques outlined in this book. By reading this document, the reader agrees that under no circumstances is the author responsible for any losses, direct or indirect, that are incurred as a result of the use of the information contained within this document, including, but not limited to, errors, omissions, or inaccuracies. Thank you for listening to Passive Income for Beginners and Dummies, written by Giovanni Richters, narrated by Ron Garner. The End